y'all it is taylor bridges here back with another video another review of ready to love this is season seven and it is episode 13 it is the finale we made it we made it we made it we are finally at the end of this season it's been a long time coming i'm so glad this is over with pretty soon we already know how this episode is going to end but we'll humor the episode i am so happy again that this is coming to an end and you already know I'm excited for the reunion because this cast was messy. They're all meeting for one final brunch. Tommy shows up and he lets the women know that it's time for the men to meet their family. I don't like how the women have had to bring on more of their people on the show. They brought friends and then they've brought a family member where the men have only brought a family member. I felt like the men should have brought their friends too. Um, I think Andre seems like a cool dude as a friend. He seems like a warm guy. And I think that's why Cynthia is still into him. His warmth and charm draws her in. Jeffrey sends Anthony to interrupt Andre and Cynthia's conversation so that Jeffrey can have time with Andre. I actually thought it was clever to send Cynthia's other connection over. That way, like, you take away but give something, like, um, just as good. And Jeffrey still gets what she wants in the end. So I actually thought it was clever. Morgan, now we're introducing uh, to the family. Morgan is introducing Tony to her brother, Harry. Morgan tells her brother that Tony was in an entanglement, which is a lie. Tony messing with Natasha is really none of Morgan's business, especially since this was at the onset of the show. Morgan, Tony, and Natasha were all literal strangers. Tony did not owe Morgan anything at all. That should go without saying, but... For the slow people in the back. Um, Harry says Tony's aggression is a red flag. And Tony advises it'll never happen again because Harry's referring to the aggression that Morgan said he had, I think, um, at the getaway that everyone went on. Um, and Tony tells the brother, pardon me, that it'll never happen again. But then he gets in his confessional playing stupid and clueless as to what aggression he could have possibly have displayed. I wonder if Morgan told her brother when she nared her ex-boyfriend's hair and if her brother has some of that energy for her that he has for Tony. Because I felt like Harry's energy was on 10. It was a bit much for me, especially for the type of woman that Morgan, your sister, has shown herself to be. Um, Morgan is no delicate flower. She's no easy person to deal with herself. Harry asked Tony, why did he choose to lay down with someone else if he was so into Morgan? Sir, he did not know your sister. But that's totally some stuff that Morgan would do. Tell a dramatic story to benefit her craziness. She literally admitted the fact that Tony laid down with this other woman in the beginning of the process. Tony did not have to even tell her. But Morgan is just being messy. She's too old to be keeping up with mess like this. All in all, the day went well. I think Tony handled himself better than I would have, uh, uh, than I thought. Cynthia invites her two cousins and sister to meet Anthony and Andre. Cynthia is already crying before they even get there. Cynthia seems to have gone through so much, but that's why I just wish she has much better discernment in this process. Because Andre, and really Anthony, Andre arrives first. He says his last relationship was with a 23 year old with a child. Now I've dated older men all through my twenties. And even I would consider it a red flag for a guy who says he is seriously looking to, for love to not only be in a relationship, a toxic relationship with a 23 year old. Your dating history says a lot about you, the company you keep and the circles you run in. I could see a little rendezvous with a 23 year old, but a full fledged relationship. And granted, 23 is grown, but let's be for real. Even if she is mature for her age, clearly Andre is not. Since he's trying to settle down with someone whose brain isn't even fully developed yet. The number of years apart isn't the issue. It's the ages they were when they began the relationship. My man is nine years older. I'm 28 though. It's different if I was 17 and he was 26. 
that it's just weird, point blank. So the age difference isn't the issue. It's never an issue. It's just when does it take place? 50-year-old and a 70-year-old meeting and getting together is different than a 18-year-old and a 38-year-old. The 20-year difference is different depending on what age y'all step into the relationship. And I think Andre's too old for a 23-year-old. If I were Cynthia, I would not be interested in Andre. Cynthia is a whole boss woman. Why, why would you want a guy who goes after 20-year-olds? If you're this boss chick that's, you know, 40 or so, you know, with kids and business, you know what I mean? Why not get with a man who wants to be with a grown woman on her stuff handling business? I wouldn't date a guy that also dates 23 year olds because I'm not like a young 23 year old. Not great. I'm 28, but I'm just saying like, I wouldn't date a guy that's not on, that's, that dates, I guess like, I don't know. Cynthia is a boss chick. She's totally different from a 23 year old. So I don't see why she wants a, a guy that's like dating both like that to me. That just would let, I would just be insecure that like Andre would have no, like no real appreciation for Cynthia. Like, what if he puts like the 23 year old and Cynthia like on the same like level? You know what I mean? Like, no. Um, plus already, Andre already complains about how strong Cynthia is and how like mature she is. And she's clearly just not as tight. He likes, I think he likes a little naivete in his women. I think that's why he likes Jeffrey's baby voice so much. Andre says he'll never be ready for a woman like Cynthia. Duh. But that's not enough for Cynthia to leave him alone. Which has me questioning how much healing has Cynthia really done? Because to even consider entering a relationship with Andre is super weird. An Anthony arrives and joins in on the conversation. Apparently, on, then back to Andre, apparently he's a professional stepdad. I'm really glad that Cynthia caught on to how Andre isn't ready for a woman like herself. So then she needs to recognize that and she needs to pull her energy back from him. Stop giving him your energy. This is a dead end. Anthony says he's noticed that Cynthia has an issue accepting help and, and he's here to change that. The words themselves sound great, but I'm just not sold that Anthony means his words. I think he's just talking. The family thinks Andre was genuine, but he's very fearful. They think Anthony is nice and is ready. So fine. Um, I don't think either guy's Cynthia's match, but we'll see where Cynthia and Anthony are by the reunion. Mercedes wasn't able to get her mom in, so she invites her friend Vanessa. I did love Vanessa's hair color. Mercedes is concerned with the potential long distance relationship that her and Mark Anthony would be in. The friend addresses it with Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony plans to be by coastal between New York and Miami. He has places in both cities and he expects his partner to go follow behind him. And I don't think that's unreasonable. For some couples, it'll totally work. I just don't think it's worth doing for a new dating relationship or a boyfriend. I need more commitment than that to essentially leave the stability I've set up for myself. That Mercedes has set up a whole life for herself. You're going to leave that just so you can continue the relationship. That's a decision you make for the betterment of the family. So being friends with benefits or just plain old girlfriend, boyfriend, that would not be enough for me. For me. Mercedes says she has no issue following her partner where they go. She just has to to have trust for her partner. And I do think that Mark Anthony has Mercedes trust for the most part. I think they have a really good um, energy and vibe together. I really like them together. The friend says Mark Anthony looks stubborn. And I thought that was just super ignorant and rude to say to somebody's face. For a first meeting, I think she, Vanessa could have been more polite with her remarks, in my opinion. If the friend of the guy I'm dating came out and was like, you look stubborn, my response would definitely cut the entire meeting short immediately. Whatever came back out of my mouth, it was gonna, it was gonna end the lunch. Like, don't come at me, don't say stuff like that. It's just rude to me, you don't know me. Ask questions and get to know me. Would you say you're a stubborn individual? Have you ever been told you were stubborn? You know, I don't know, something other than just telling him he looks stubborn. That's super like not educated, like it's super unintelligent. That's more of a remark you make when you're watching a show or a movie, you know, casual talk. It's not like intelligent, polite talk to say to someone. Say it behind his back at the least. It's not to his face like that. What is he supposed to say to that? Like, you know, she asks him if he's willing to change. And he, Vanessa asks Mark Anthony if he's willing to change. And he's trying to answer the question, but she interrupts him. It's a yes or a no. Continuing to come on a little strong. 
calm down. Let him answer the question. I don't see how adults let other adults speak to them any kind of way. Because I would have gotten up if you directed it that way. Like, watch your mouth and watch your tone. I don't like seeing women speak to men like that, knowing if that were, like, directed at, a, at like, another woman. Like, if she were directing that to another woman, the woman, like, the woman wouldn't go for that. So that's, indicate, that's an indicator that that's improper behavior. And I bet you Vanessa is single. I bet she's a single friend. After the talk, Vanessa tells Mercedes she's concerned about the long distance. And I agree with Vanessa. I don't think it's worth it. Maybe they can continue to date in the meantime until they build something if they're able to do so. But there's just no foundation of a relationship to commit to. So I don't think it'd be a wise decision for Mercedes. Jeffrey has her sister here to meet Andre. She has a whitish blonde bob in her confessional look. It's not the worst, but it ages De Jeffrey a lot to me and it's not flattering on her. How does Jeffrey sound when she's mad and yelling? I really want to know and hear how she sounds when she has like bass in her voice. Just curious. Andre says there's no comparison when asked about he and Jeffrey's connection versus the others, AKA Cynthia. Um, I wonder if Cynthia is going to be upset, you know, by the time we get to the reunion. I wonder if she's going to have any animosity towards him because Andre has been giving her false hope blatantly for at least the last three episodes. It makes so much more sense for Jeffrey and Andre to be together. His demeanor was even different meeting with Jeffrey's family versus Cynthia's family. He comes with a, he came with a different energy because he actually likes Jeffrey. Um, all of the plates are full by the time Jeffrey and her sister get up to leave. So they didn't eat their food. Now it's time for the final decisions. Here we are. This was a quick review. This episode didn't really give. We just ready to get to the end for them to make the decisions. We pretty much, we knew at least who were going to, who was going to be in the final scenes together to choose. But some of the, some of the decisions definitely were shocking. Um, first up is Mark Anthony and Mercedes. I really like the Mercedes dress, the black, really cute. Mercedes ends up not choosing Mark Anthony back. He chooses her. She doesn't choose him back because she needs an anchor in someone. And I thought that was super smart of Mercedes. And I know they'll keep in contact. So maybe they'll be still talking about the reunion. I would not be surprised. Tony chooses Morgan, but Morgan ends up pulling a Sabrina, choosing herself. Pleasantly surprised. They are both toxic and they both need a lot of maturing. And we see they're going to turn up at the reunion. Andre chooses Jeffrey and Jeffrey says that her and I, that Andre is her biblical husband and she chooses him back. Jeffrey is delusional. But who am I to burst her bubble? They're cute together though. And I think they are good choices for each other based on what they say they want for themselves. I don't think they're a good fit in the grand scheme, but... They like each other, and based on what they say they want, I think the other gives them what they want. Cynthia and Anthony choose each other, and once again, I've been saying this, I gotta wait to the reunion to see what's really up. Anthony seems like he'd be flaky, like as soon as the cameras are off, nothing pops off. The reunion looks entertaining. Andre is wearing shorts. Him and Jeffrey are going to have a tiff back and forth. Morgan and Tony are going to have a tiff. So I'm really hyped. I know it was short and sweet, y'all. It wasn't much that went on. We just wanted to get to the decisions, and we have them, and we have the reunion coming up. Um, actually, tomorrow, since I'm putting this video out late, but I thank you for tuning in and watching. If you could please like, comment, and subscribe, I would be so, so, so appreciative. Thank you for tuning in.